and sound and a video and let's synchronize it that should be good enough hello there everybody and welcome to this video now what you're looking at right now in my uh, rather rudimentary setup you're directly staring at a television screen sorry about that I'm just too lazy to set up a screen recording what you're looking at right now is a fairly standard distribution box as you'd find it in Czech Republic it's not an amazing quality it's not terrible quality it's really somewhere in the middle you know medium quality stuff you can see some tags here where things are marked you don't see a whole lot of values here there's some 16 amp switches there's some 10 amp switches it's all offline on that photo because it wasn't finished yet right now there's a there's some power in there but still uh, that place is still under construction so we're really using it only for construction purposes for now you can see there's two RCDs this one is for kitchen that's the top row here this one is for the rooms that's down here and this is the main switch it's it has it has no characteristics it's just a switch up there in this mess you can see where the cables are coming in this is your PE rail this is your N rail this is your N1 rail that's for the first RC breaker and your N2 rail is for the second one now why would I show you this well this I'm showing you because I would like you to have some comparison to what you're gonna see next and that is this now my friend have decided that he's going to do some reconstruction and they're basically adding some new rooms to the house you know a little bit of construction behind and they have told me that they already have electricity going in there through a cable that they literally just need to connect those things on the other side to which i've said i would like to see where that cable comes from and it took us about an hour to figure it out but eventually i have figured out that they're two and a half millimeter squared oops that their two and a half millimeter squared motor cable is coming from here so what you're seeing here is kind of an outdated switch like they're still manufactured but this one was manufactured very long time ago it's a push-pull switch in this configuration it has removed top because we need to remove the cover and unfortunately with these switches it's kind of a construction fault with these if you want to remove the cover you have to remove the top of the switch so you can't control it right now but as you can see a lot has been happening inside this distribution box so as, as I have said this is the main switch I'm not sure what kind of power it could carry but this is the incoming cable uh, this is 10 millimeter squared wires each so their top limit is about 50 amps legally uh, they could carry more but legally it's 50 amps you could push it up to 63 amps reasonably safely uh, but normatively it's 50 amps you can see that there was something happening up here uh, this brass color right there is an actual uh, brass uh, or bronze because somebody had a somebody had a oopsie there somebody screwdriver slipped and I know who screwdriver slipped because the culprit have admitted that he was uh, doing all of the electricity in the house himself so what you see here is really just the tip of the iceberg this is the distribution box and what you're gonna be what you're seeing here is that one he messed up here because these are already burned the screwdriver slipped down here is a thinner there are thinner wires coming out which normatively is forbidden here 
It's not supposed to happen, but I'm not losing my mind over it because their main switch on the building is 32 amps and this is six millimeter squared cable, this one. So that's reasonably okay. Uh, the problem that comes is with the cable that was supposed to be used for that part of a reconstruction where essentially the whole bottom of the house is powered with that and that is this these wires sticking right there those have been wrapped around the main cable here and are now sticking on the side without any kind of switch so this is full 32 amps going in and they wanted me to connect the whole bottom of the house onto that. Uh, there is another switch on the way, uh, another circuit breaker on the way uh, with this wire. That's 25 amps. That's still too much for two and a half millimeter squared cable. Uh, by the way, this cable is five times two and a half millimeters squared. So it's your CYKYJ uh, two and a half millimeters uh five times two and a half millimeters um not built for any such purpose but then you know after i have seen this atrocity i have gotten very interested in what's here and what's here is this which is unused which is strange because typically these switches tend to be used because this is a strong switch. And when it comes to handyman houses, uh, they tend to use the strongest uh, strongest circuit breakers that they, could, that they possibly can so that the circuit breakers do not break, um, which is wrong. But this one is unused completely. It's disconnected down here. It's disconnected up there. What you see up here is just a tape. Tape, by the way, is a common theme here because apparently a lot of things have been happening in this box. This is a 10 amp switch. And there is a single, there is like an input wire on that, which is then connected into something else as well. And so there are three wires inside the top of this. And that's your output. Uh, that's already, uh, that's already a problem because you're not supposed to have three wires here. The manufacturer guarantees only two wires to be safe. And it's usually right. Uh, three wires no longer have a good connection because the middle one typically tends to be uh, tends to be in a bit of a gap between the two previous ones. So uh, it's just not a good contact. Then you have another switch, uh, which is clearly, I mean, this one is clearly different from everything else here. This one is, again, clearly different because uh, you have all of these W switches. These are pretty old. And this one, I think, is a little bit newer. This is uh, uh, this is IJ switch. Uh, uh, this is IJ breaker, actually. I say switch, but those are all breakers. This is 16 amp breaker, and it seems to be a little bit newer one. And it says garage, which is uh, false. It's not a garage because I have been to the garage. There's completely different cable there. Um, now, or, or maybe that could be actually the light for the garage. Oh yeah, I, I've seen something turn on and off in the garage. Uh, so maybe there is something connected that is in the garage, but the main cable that they want to use is not this. That's the one I've shown you right there, this atrocity. Uh, in the bottom, you can see that the craftsmanship is beautiful. Um, Jesus Christ. It, if it had been an electrician, I would have been seriously suspecting him of having a stroke. Uh, and this guy really came came at me with this mindset of, well, I'm not an electrician, so this actually ain't bad, right? Uh, wrong. The fact that you're not an electrician doesn't make a job made poorly any better. All right? Uh, if a child draws a person and that person looks like just a ball and a bunch of sticks, it's cute. If an adult man threatened his children with electricity, that is homicide. Okay? That, that's a completely different measure here. So don't come at me with, oh, I'm not an electrician, so it's not that bad. No, it's absolutely that fucking bad. By the way, 
we are moving up to, onto the net, another switch, which is 20 amp switch. Uh, now, 20 amp switch is kind of an interesting choice because what comes out of that, I think, I think would be another two and a half millimeter squared wire. Uh, 20 amp switch is too strong for two and a half millimeter squared wire, especially in an installation in this kind of shape. Uh, so because it's much cleaner here, I am willing to believe that uh, I'm willing to believe that this broke and probably that broke. Maybe those two even burned. And so they have been replaced and they have found a 20 amp switch and a 16 amp IJ switch that may have written, may, may have had written garage on it already. Uh, on we go to another 6 amp switch, nothing too interesting here, just one wire. Then there's another 6 amp switch, and interestingly enough, nothing's connected there. It's on, but there is nothing there. By the way, this is after I have vacuumed the box. Okay, so this is nice and clean. Otherwise, all of this was just covered in rubble. There was rubble all over this thing. It was just, it was just terrible. Uh, so on we go. Uh, here we have another three wires in a single, under a single bolt. Again, wrong. Uh, in this case, it's not even clear what kind of a switch that is. But we're going on. These are all six amp switches, by the way, so I presume they used to be light circuits. Now, God knows what they are. Um, 10 amp switch. Another one. Um, two wires. And we go on to some more. Some more 10 amp switches. Then something interesting. Uh, Canlux uh, breaker. I can't quite remember what Canlux makes as a general thing, but I know for sure that one thing I wouldn't buy from them is a circuit breaker. Uh, it, it's just they are not a trustworthy brand to me, not enough trustworthy brand to me to sell me this type of device, you know, safety device. Uh, then there's Noark, uh, those are Chinese. Uh, they're actually, I would say they're like medium quality. They're not some amazing stuff, but they work. And in this case, we know that this is a boiler, this is a boiler, and this is a washing machine, uh, which is fairly rare because this is the only time you get to actually know what the switch actually does. Now, uh, if we take a look at this as a whole, you can see that there's a whole lot of extra wires that we haven't described here. And those are those two, well, actually three bundles. So this bundle comes out of this and up. And this is actually coming down, I believe, at least from what I found on the place. So these are connected down onto the bottom of this and they're powering different parts of uh, this atrocity down here. So this is all interconnected in a way so that this is sort of divided along the house and this is one apartment this is another apartment and they're measuring up here above this distribution box there are two measuring clock with which they're measuring the consumption uh, because of course uh, you have to make sure that your children are paying you for the electricity that they're using uh, the fact that the house burns down is a completely secondary thing uh, and that would be it for this box, I believe. By the way, pretty much the only things that are reasonably okay in this box are those three switches uh, on the end here and uh, this contactor which is uh, a remote control, a group remote control uh, essentially switching between cheap electricity and expensive electricity. Although nowadays it's all expensive electricity because it's 2023. So, you know, go figure. So we can get away from that. And I'll show you another box here. 
Hang on, I'll have to pull it here. There we go. And what you're seeing here is a bit newer box. It's significantly less atrocious than the one you have seen moments ago. It's still the same house, but that is where that thin cable that I have shown you goes. I haven't photographed the 25 amp switch that's in between that, that's in a different room again. Uh, that's your handyman thinking, because why would I put everything in the same box? Let's just, uh, you know, uh, let's just make a lot of different places so the electrician who comes to fix the damn thing is going to have a lot of work with this. But uh, the important parts here is that the grounding wires are connected into the actual OG uh, grounding. I don't know why the man was even attempting to divide these because uh, uh, because he's literally mixing green and blue wires together. There's something that there's something completely unknown. I, I think that's that's red. And it has just like a just like a piece of in white insulation put on it, so it looks neutral or something. Yeah, but that no wait, that's that's a different wire. Yeah, so hell knows what that is. I'll have to diagnose that. These red, th this red wire, what that is, don't know. But. Uh... Hopefully I'll figure it out when I'm doing the reconstruction because yes, I have said yes to that, but my condition to that would be we're rebuilding this. Uh, so this is a distribution box that is powering the bottom of the house, specifically the bottom where my best friend lives with his wife and uh, this is going to be moved to a different place so they have good access to this because this room will be disconnected from their apartment so it, they will have this they will have separate apartment in their parents house essentially it's a good deal you know if you have a gigantic house available you can have a multi-generation house made into it just just call an electrician by the way in terms of craftsmanship uh, again if i had seen an electrician do this you know all of these exposed pieces of copper i would have said that the guy got a stroke uh by the way common theme with all of the wires in this house is nothing has anything written on it uh in this case the distribution box doesn't even have names on the individual switches uh, not on the cover, not on the switches themselves. It's just a mystery. You don't get to know what is what. Um, and that's bolted onto the wall, but that still isn't the place where the cable ends. Because the actual cable they wanted me to use is connected down here. And you can see there's this yellow tape on them. So the handyman who was building this apparently have figured out, okay, I kind of want to know which cable that is. And uh, I find that to be exceptionally nice from him because it made it a little bit easier to find that. And uh, now that uh, we know what that is, the problem here, even though everything is like OG manufacturer stuff, uh, all right, so, so this rail up here, that's OG manufacturer stuff, all of these switches, medium quality, all of the stuff in the bottom here. I don't know why he made that interconnection here. As I said, he's mixing blue and greens and yellow, so it's just no damn point in this. Uh, so he could have just, you know, left it all on one side, stick everything under one screw, and it would have probably been looking less atrocious but whatever um he tried you failed uh as of right now i'm not even sure which one of them is actually the main cable coming in i think that would be this one but i'm not sure it's maybe coming out but this cable that's coming out that's three phase cable and the problem with that is that these are this is not a three phase switch these are three one phase switches which means that if you kick one phase out and it clicks uh two of them are still on 
that's a problem. You don't want that. If that cable, if one phase is overloaded, you want all of these. You want all three phases to shut down. You don't want any extra current in there because you can have partial damage to the cable. Uh, you can have partial overload. You can have a three-phase motor on the end of that. Now that three-phase motor is running on two phases, uh, it's just uh, it's just travesty. Don't do that. All right. Don't do single-phase switches. Uh, so that's one problem. And of course, the cable coming out again is uh, five times uh, is your CYKYJ. Uh, five times two and a half millimeters squared, which is good enough for this value of switches, but it's not good enough considering that there's going to be a washing machine and a dryer and a bedroom and God knows what else they're going to be. Oh, and a boiler and God knows what else they're going to be connecting there. So it's just, it's just, uh, it, it would maybe hold, but it's just not safe. It's just not safe in terms of, hey, are we going to have enough power or are we going to be constantly running in, uh, flipping up breakers? Uh, so I'm going to be preventing that. We're going to be rebuilding this, replacing this. We're going to be drawing new cable into the installation from that previous box that you have seen there. Hang on, let me see if I can find it there. From this, this, this box will be completely rebuilt. I will put two rows of switches there. Uh, <clears throat> one row will be serving these measuring devices there, and you know, I mean, these, these measuring clocks up there. Uh, there will be proper main switch, all modular stuff, and I will make one, maybe two rows. I'll see if I can fit all of that into one row, and then I would basically just use these screws, uh, these bolts that are right here and I will attach a DIN rail on there along the whole length and I will change this for a new switch and I will put new main switch in here all of new breakers I will basically do a little bit of a combing of the of all of the wiring and all of the devices so that it's all you know it's not going to be perfectly normative, but I would be able to stand up behind this and say, yeah, it's safe to use. And I think that would be, I think, I think after that, it would be like 100% more safe, 100% more reliable. If you, if you take a look at this, yeah, and by the way, I didn't finish. Uh, after that reconstruction, I will pull a new cable uh, CYKYJ five times four millimeters squared, which is thicker, and it will hold 25 amps. There will be a 25 amp three phase switch, which will go into the back, and my best friend will get his own cable and his own distribution box, and it will all be safe and it will all be reasonable. And uh, I'm not gonna get enough money for this, it's a friend. So it's literally just to keep him alive at this point. I, I'm, and still, even though I, I won't, I won't, I effectively won't have any profit off of this, or well, I will have a little bit of profit, maybe, but very small profit. Uh, he, the material for this will cost some 36,000 check runs, over a thousand dollars worth of material, uh, 36,000 check rounds is like what, $1,500, $1,500, almost $2,000 actually. So yeah, almost $2,000 in material and I'll be getting like 200 bucks for the whole work. So yeah. You, you can you can you can guess where the greed is because handymen often say oh well the greedy electricians they they don't want us to touch these these things because because they want to get all of the money no no it's not about the money it's about the fact that you don't know a fucking thing about electricity and we're trying to keep you alive desperately and you're doing everything to kill yourself just stop 
call an electrician, pay us the cash, and get that job done properly. For God's fucking sake, this thing almost killed the whole... This thing is on the edge of killing my best friend and everyone he knows, basically, right? His entire goddamn family. So... This is very serious. Electricity... Elect messing with electricity is not like messing with water or, uh, I don't know, building materials, okay? Because electricity, if, if, you, if you screw up a house, it's going to start cracking. Those things usually let you know that something is wrong. Electricity is invisible. You can't hear it for the most part. It doesn't smell. It's just going to kill you, silently and painfully. Don't mess with it. Just call an electrician. And that would be all for me, uh, from me, for today. And sound off. <laughs>